Okay, so today we have a problem relating to work and energy. And the problem is written in the description, so we can go ahead and read it there. And I'm also going to read it out loud right now. So we're told that we have a wooden block with mass m, which is equal to 1.50 kilograms. And we're also told that it is at the bottom of a spring, which is compressed. So that means it has potential energy. And it's at the bottom of an incline with an angle equal to 30 degrees. And they call this point A in the book. When the spring is released, it says, it says that it projects the block up the incline. At point B, right here, which this is a distance D, equal to 6.00 meters. It travels 6 meters up there, and by the time it reaches point B, its velocity is equal to 7.00 meters per second. And we're told that there is a friction force acting on the block as it goes up the, the ramp as well, and that there's a coefficient of friction, kinetic friction, equal to 0 0.50. And the question is, the, um, the question is, that calc is the cal they tell us to calculate the amount of potential energy that the block has stored, that the block had initially stored when it was compressed against the spring. And so the best way to approach this problem is to write out our understanding of the work energy theorem in the most general form. And the work energy theorem tells us that the kinetic energy at point one plus the potential energy at point one, plus the work done by anything other than conservative forces. A conservative force is one that does not depend on the path taken. Kinetic friction is one that is non-conservative because if you take a different path, it will have a different amount or a different quantity. And we know that that's equal to the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at point two. And so at this point, we can just define each of these different points. So we know that kinetic energy at point 1 is equal to 0 joules, because the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, and there's no velocity initially. The potential energy, though, is equal to 1 half the k constant k x squared, where this is Hooke's law. k is the constant of the spring, which is a property of the spring, and x is the displacement do uh, the displacement from equilibrium of the spring. But they're just asking us to calculate the entire potential energy of that spring. So actually, it doesn't even, this, the, the, the individual um, quantities of these um, variables don't actually matter to us. And so moving on to the work other, work other in this case is the friction force. And we know that friction is actually negative in this case because we're defining positive to be up the ramp. So therefore, we're going to have a negative force of friction times the displacement that it goes through, because work is defined as force times displacement. And the work of friction, as we know, as we remember from earlier chapters from Newton's law, we know that this is, we know that it's equal to the normal force. And we know that this is gravity, always pointing down. And if we define our coordinate system a bit angled, we know that this is our y component of gravity, and this is our x component of gravity, and we know that this is our normal force. Our normal force is always perpendicular to the, um, to the, to the, to the, um, is always normal to the perpendicular, which is our ramp right there, and we know that it's always opposite to the gravity of that component, and we know that this one is always equal to mg excuse me, mg sine alpha, where this angle is alpha. I defined it as theta, so this one is theta. And we know that this one is, oh, excuse me, actually, this one's actually equal to mg cosine theta, because we know that opposite, opposite over hypotenuse is sine, and then adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So that one is mg cosine theta, which is actually the negative, and we know that this component has to be the positive one. 
And so we know that the normal force is going to be equal to mg cosine theta times the coefficient of friction. But it has to be negative because we know that friction is negative times the displacement, d, which is that 6 meters that we, what we talked about earlier. And then the kinetic friction, the kinetic energy at point 2, which is point b in this case, is equal to 1 half times the mass of the block times the velocity at that point, which was the 7 meters squared. And the final potential energy is going to be equal to the gravitational potential energy, which at this point is mgh. mg being the force, h being the displacement. And so h is that place right there. And what we, ha we have here is a triangle. And so by t definition, we know that opposite over hypotenuse is um, the sine of the angle. So sine of the angle times d is equal to h. So we have to write d times the sine of the angle. This is what, was what, what h is equal to. So we should put equal right there. d times the sine of the angle times mg. So just to clarify, that's mg times h, h being d times sine theta, because we know from up here that the sine of theta is equal to h over d, and I brought the d over, that's equal to h. So d times sine theta is equal to mg. So at this point, we have all of our values defined. So we know that this is equal to 0. The potential energy is what we're looking for, negative mg cosine theta times the mu times d. If you calculate that, because we have all the values, we have m, we know what g is, we know, that th we know what theta is, we know what mu is, and we know the displacement, 6 meters. And we know that that one is equal, and by calculation, we find that it's equal to negative 38.19 joules. And then our final kinetic energy, we have that as well. We have the mass and we have the velocity, one half, and that's equal to, if you calculate it, that one's equal to 36.75. And then finally, at the very end, the displacement, we know d, we know theta, we know mg as well, that will be equal to 44.1. So if we move over to a new page, just slightly. If we plug into the original work energy theorem, we know that that one, the fr that, that um, we know that the kinetic energy at point one is zero, plus at one, we don't know that, that's what we're looking for, plus work other, which is negative 38.19, is equal to the kinetic energy two, 36.75 plus 44.1. And all we have to do now is solve for the energy at one, because the energy at one is the initial potential energy stored, which is what they're looking for. And just by simple algebra, we find that the potential energy at point one is equal to 119 joules. So just to recap, what we did first was write out our, our work energy theorem in the most general form, and we looked at each value alone to find out what that was. And we knew that the kinetic energy at 1 was 0, potential energy at 1 was what we were looking for, but if they were asking for other stuff, we know that that's equal to 1 half kx squared, which is Hooke's law, because there's a spring there, but we just wanted the entire value, so the individual ones didn't matter. And the work other is the non-conservative force, um, the work, do work done by a non-conservative force, which was the force of friction here. And then kinetic energy two was our, f our velocity, which, wa which was given to us at point B. And then our potential energy was the energy due, the potential energy due to gravity, due to that point H, which we found by trigonometry. And then we plugged in everything, and we got our final value right there. So hopefully that made sense.